Breaking news in Nicholasville tonight. We're tracking the investigation into a deadly crash on US 27. Tracking the potential for a light wintry mix. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. We'll talk about how that kicks off a wild weekend of weather coming up. And how dozens of people remember two men killed in a Pulaski County crash nearly a week ago. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. We begin tonight with a breaking news alert out of Jessamine County. Police tell us one person has died in a crash on US 27 in Nicholasville. They say a car slammed into the back of a forklift being hauled by a dump truck. The crash happened just after 8 tonight in the northbound lanes of US 27, just south of Brandon Crossing. Jerrica Insco joins us now live with the breaking details. Jerrica. Amber, that's right. We are here on US 27 near Industry Road, where only one lane of traffic is open following a deadly crash that happened at about 8 o'clock. Now, as for what caused this crash, Nicholasville police tell us that it happened when an Olympic construction dump truck towing a forklift turned off Industry Road onto northbound 27. That's when police tell me a car slammed into the back of that forklift that the dump truck was carrying on a trailer. Now, police tell me the man driving that car died instantly and he had no one with him. But the driver and the passenger in the dump truck are not hurt. There are still several officials on this very sad scene tonight, including police, fire, and the deputy coroners. We're going to notify the next of kin and make sure all of the families are notified before we release any information with the subject's name. Uh, but we can confirm that it is a male subject that was in the accident. As you can see, this is still a very active scene here on US 27, but police do hope to have all of the lanes open before midnight. It is still an ongoing investigation. Reporting live in Nicholasville, Jerrica Insco, WKYT. Jerrica, thank you. Now we turn our attention to the weather, and we could see a little bit of everything across Kentucky this weekend, and it might start with some wintry weather tomorrow morning. We begin tonight with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. He shows us what he's tracking on the First Alert Defender. Yeah, things pretty calm out there right now, Amber. That will change, though, a bit as we go into our Friday with some very light precipitation moving on into town. Could take on the form of some frozen stuff out there, but again, the key word on all this is light. Light First Alert Defender late on day one of a brand new year shows nothing across central and eastern Kentucky. So we broaden out our view to focus on what's going on into far western Kentucky, Missouri, southern parts of Illinois. Notice here the precipitation that is showing up is in the form of some light rain and it is very scattered in nature. What is here is going to try to work its way toward the east for a very light wintry mix in some areas. Not all areas tomorrow. Temperatures during this should stay mainly above the freezing mark tomorrow, but in a few cases, it could be borderline. Overall, it's a small impact across central and eastern Kentucky. And as a matter of fact, some areas may not see very much at all coming from the skies into the day tomorrow. That will change up, though, as we go deeper into our weekend. Look at the cloud canopy all the way now into the Great Lakes from a storm system that is just now beginning to fire up across the Lone Star state of Texas. That'll roll its way onto the northeast and be right on top of the bluegrass state to start the weekend. And you know what that means? Things take a walk on the wild side. We'll break down the highs and the lows of that seven-day forecast with the hour-by-hour -hour forecast, which is updated, Amber, coming your way in less than 10 minutes. Chris, thank you. Tonight, friends and family of two men killed in a Pulaski County crash gathered to remember them. Last Friday, investigators say Jody Johnson and Justin Angel died when the car they were riding in hit a tanker truck in Somerset. The driver of the car survived and is now out of the hospital. Friends of the victims held a candlelight vigil tonight at the scene of the crash. Garrett Weimer has our top story at 11. Near feet from the road, a place that holds so many painful memories for the friends and family gathered here. It's been a nightmare, just a nightmare that I've not woke up from. It's just it seems like it's so unreal. It seems like he's just going to pop up and tell me it was all been a big joke. Finding it hard to come to terms with the deaths of Jody Johnson and Justin Angel, both friends of so many who turned out to remember them. And when him was going fishing this week, but we didn't get to. 
Route 914 and Kentucky 80 are two pretty busy roads here in Pulaski County. And friends say when they drive by, it's a difficult reminder of the lives lost here the day after Christmas. We have tragically lost. Jody and Justin and Travis, they didn't have friends. They had family. Everybody was family to them. And Jody loved my kids like he would love his own. To them, this makeshift memorial is more than just a tribute. It's a reminder, they say, of the dangers on this stretch of road. Dangers they'll never be able to forget. In Pulaski County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. The driver of the car, Travis Strope, has been released from the hospital, but his grandmother tells us he may never fully recover from his injuries. Tonight, we are tracking the investigation into a fire that damaged a Lexington home. The fire started just after 7 tonight on St. Martin's Avenue near Georgetown Street. Firefighters say when they arrived, they could see uh, smoke coming from the home. Uh, they say the woman inside the home got out safely and they put the fire out quickly. There's moderate to heavy damage in the kitchen. It did breach the ceiling and get into the attic. Firefighters think food left on the stove may have sparked the fire, but they are still investigating. They say the woman who lives at the home will be staying with friends tonight. Tonight, investigators think meningitis caused the death of a Clark County High School student. 15-year-old Cole Hahn died Tuesday. The Clark County superintendent says Cole was a straight-A student and a member of the Clark County High School soccer team. And he was a beloved friend to many, not only students, but staff in our, in our district. So it's a tragic loss for us. The superintendent says school buildings in the district are being cleaned and disinfected as a precaution, even though this type of meningitis did not require them to do that. The superintendent says grief counselors will be on hand for students when classes resume Monday. Tonight, we are learning more about a state police involved shooting that left a man dead. It happened late last night at a home on U.S. 60 in Carter County. State police say they were called to the home for a report of domestic violence. When they arrived, police say the suspect fired a shot at them through a window. Police say a trooper shot back, killing the suspect. John Lucas says that suspect was his mother's boyfriend. He says the boyfriend assaulted his mother and even pulled out a gun. So Lucas called police. He said they saved his mother's life. He began to get more violent towards my mother. Um, he, my mom was <sighs> screaming and crying, and I just had enough. And I luckily called 911 when I did, because if I hadn't, my mom wouldn't be with me right now. Police have not released the name of the suspect killed in the shooting. They say the assault victim was taken to the hospital to be checked out. No police officers were injured. Friends say she was a talented and bright person. Tonight, they're remembering a Madison County woman killed in a crash. Investigators say 22-year-old Chelsea Harnack died early this morning after being thrown from a car along Four Mile Road near Richmond. Two other people in the car were injured and taken to UK Hospital. The pastor of Harnack's church says her family is devastated. Devastated, and he's doing what he can to help them. Sometimes it's just important to know that folks are there. There's nothing they can do in, in, uh, in the fullest sense of the word other than just uh, provide you with uh, the consolation of their company. Police have not said who was driving the car. They believe speed played a role in that accident. In Somerset, family members of a 92-year-old woman say she's lucky to be alive after a truck crashed into her house. Somerset police say Tony Lewis was speeding down Clifty Street when his truck ran off the road, went airborne, and crashed into Sarah Stagall's house this morning. Stagall wasn't injured. Her family says she was in the opposite end of the house. She thought that a storm had come through. She said the noise sounded like a tornado. Police say Lewis was airlifted to UK hospital, but he has non life threatening injuries. They believe alcohol may have been a factor in that crash. Court records show Lewis has a lengthy criminal record. The homeowner's family says they aren't sure if that house can be repaired. Some new laws have kicked in for the new year in states across the country in just nine minutes. How they affect things from minimum wage to the price of eggs. And then why a Central Kentucky mother says she blames bullying for her 12-year-old daughter's death. Well, here in Kentucky, a new law took effect today that requires public agencies and anyone doing business with government agencies in the state to strengthen security to prevent data breaches. They also have to notify customers of any data breach. 
Tonight, a Nelson County mother blames bullying for her child's death. She says her 12 year old daughter took her own life. Reagan Carter's mother says the girl dealt with bullies both online and at her middle school. She says her daughter wasn't depressed, but the harassment was too much for her. Her mother says Reagan overdosed on prescription cough medicine and died two days before Christmas. She says a group of girls at Bardstown Middle School harassed her daughter and bullied her online. I don't think about the long term consequences of what that's doing to another human being who has feelings and who has thoughts and who has a really big heart. Reagan's mother says she doesn't think the school did enough to prevent the bullying. The Bardstown superintendent did not comment. Bardstown police say they are investigating Reagan's death. Tonight, family members of a northern Kentucky boy say he died days after being diagnosed with the flu. Six year old Mikey Galapa died December 20th at a hospital in Florence. An autopsy has been scheduled to determine an exact cause of death. Kentucky health leaders say six people have died of flu complications so far this season. Former New York Governor Mario Cuomo has died. He served three terms in the state's highest office from 1983 until 1994. The Democrat also considered running for president twice. Cuomo was 82 years old. His son Andrew is New York's current governor. A grand jury has indicted 10 people on organized retail crime charges in Pulaski County. The suspects are owners and managers at convenience stores around the county. Investigators say they recruited shoplifters to bring in stolen items to resell. A Laurel County mother has a new addition for the new year. Misty Hunter gave birth to the first baby of 2015 at St. Joseph London Hospital. Owen Anthony Scott was born around 8 this morning. Both mother and father say they couldn't be happier. I mean, I knew he would be in New Year's baby. I just I didn't expect him to be the first. I think he's going to look more like me than his sister did. I'm excited about that. Staff at the hospital gave the family a wagon filled with all kinds of goodies to celebrate the hospital's first birth of 2015. Can